Hello and very thank you for joining us on Off the Press and Plus TV Africa. It's Children's Day and we have been having a whole lot of them in our studios bringing you new stories that will continue. But for now, we have with us live in the studio a social commentator and Plus TV Africa producer, Ekene Ezeji. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, happy Children's Day to you. <laughs> Not a child, I'm still a I child at heart. <laughs> and we also have a public affairs analyst, Najib Bello, join us um, via Zoom. Uh, thank Thank you very much, Najib, for joining us uh, for Good the morning. newspaper. Good morning to you. Okay, um, let's start with the nation newspaper this morning. Uh, the big one here is COVID-19. Chloroquine trial to continue in Nigeria. Uh, medical experts divided on NABDAG's action. Uh, for those that are unaware of that story, our analyst will help us um, uh, get a better grasp of it. Um, more headlines here. NDDC accuses lawmakers of seeking 6.4 billion naira fake payment. Um, we had the House member uh, Benjamin Kalu earlier uh, on our news. I'm sure analysts also watched it and they will react um, uh, on that. Let's just start the conversation. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Ekene. COVID-19 chloroquine trial to continue in Nigeria. What's uh, your reaction to that? You, you also yes. saw the interview with the NAPTEG uh, DG earlier Yes, today. I did. I, I felt she, she was careful not to indemnify themselves, but I still feel that the buck has to stop, not just with the medical practitioners, because there's always that risk that something could go wrong. And my concern with medical trials of any sort, not even chloroquine, which has been proven to have serious side effects like blindness, if you take it for a continued period of time, is that we're not very good at owning um, do you say compensation? We don't have a good track record in Nigeria of compensating victims who fall foul. And a lot of these people are vulnerable people who don't have the means to take you to court. So a lot of times they suffer losses. You, you could just name some of these um, accidents we've seen, whether it's the fires or whether it's the so-called, I don't know, the explosion pipe. We don't hear much about people getting what's due them. So I'm concerned. That's where my concern lies. That if there are side effects, one, will they come to light? Will they be open and transparent about people who suffer side effects? And secondly, will they give them what to do them? And I'm not sure it's enough to say if you've gone ahead and said, go ahead and do these trials. That's um, with the NAFTA. Uh, she, she did talk about cautioning the I'm not um, sure that's medical. enough. I, I really have to say, with all due respect, and I, I do like the way she comes across, I'm not sure it's enough to say you've given your caution so it lies with the doctors. Now you're giving each individual doctor the responsibility when you've gone ahead and flagged it off, when you could have been the one to say, actually, no, this is not quite as, you know. Najib, what, what's your thought on this? Um, I would okay. let it slide, but it's a big issue now. Yes, it is a big issue. Now, we, we must understand that we are in a period of crisis. We are in a period of global crisis due to the pandemic. So in this kind of period, of course, there is there's an avenue for you to give some leeway for people to try or test things out differently from when you would the way you would act if there was no crisis. The world is in a rush to find a cure. Now, there's real promise with... Um, chloroquine. There is very real promise with, with chloroquine. Sure it started is. in China when they discovered that most of the people who they found chloroquine in their blood in um, Wuhan, they found that the most people who felt they had some kind of malaria, who took some uh, chloroquine or so, they, they healed faster than other people. So they notified the rest of the world that these are what we noticed. So it's worth trying out. Now, there are side effects. We all know there are side effects. Most drugs have side effects, you know. But then again, if it's going to be used to treat people in critical, just the critical cases, which most likely are, maybe there's a, possi there's a high possibility of them dying, then it's worth trying out. And I think but, they should set out the protocols Let me, let me, for let me be a, a <laughs> devil's advocate now and say that um, you acknowledge that there are side effects. We also acknowledge that the, the, the virus is novel. Not a lot is known about its nature. Scientists exactly. are still trying to unravel what it is about yes. and how they can go about tackling yes. it. So is it possible 
that there is every likelihood that these people that we say have recovered uh, are not showing symptoms might in mm. months down the line exhibit certain um I mean, yes. exhibit certain um, yes. side effects that we are on account we can't account for. So, wouldn't it be better to trade on the part of caution? Again, on the other side, if we're trading on the part of caution, people get to die. And, and may from... I just may I just interject? I know I know you. Let him okay. let him speak. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me let me let me finish with this. Okay. You see, we have to be very cautious. But then again this virus moves fast we are almost clocking six million people infected so far since about december late december or middle of december about six million people and we don't know we are expecting mutations we're expecting a lot of things so the faster we get rid of covid 19 the better for the whole world so we have to try as many things as possible now the, the, what is wrong with chloroquine is the side effects and I'll tell you something else. We, if you look properly, another drug that is like chloroquine, but nobody is talking about it except the Madagascans, is atemicinin. Atemicinin has less side effects than chloroquine and acts almost like it. And the Madagascan people, what they are trying to sell to the world with that, their drink is atemicinin that is inside. Um, and Najib, I, I wouldn't want us to um, um, expand because so we have limited I, time and we need to touch on a lot think, of issues. But should, the Madagascar issue is already... Whatever they want to, yeah, we should set the guidelines straight, but let people continue with the chloroquine research. It's very important at this point. Do not stop it. It yeah, shouldn't be stopped at all. <laughs> yeah, there are worrying uh, reports coming out of Madagascar as regards this matter. So we're just going to leave it and see further development. Yes, so we can I wasn't going to further yes. So just quickly react yes. to this so we can yes. move on um, um, to and, and Najib, issues. I also want you to sort of take note of this because um, some of the arguments that the NAFDAQ um, DG brought up was to say Africans don't necessarily react the same way to Caucasians, which is why even if WHO says this is dangerous, I will not necessarily rule it out for Africa. Yes. But you are citing yes. a Caucasian experiment, and you're sort of saying the Chinese, and as far as I'm concerned, they fall into that category. So I'm, like, um, I'm going mm. back to what Felicity said. There's so much that is unknown. I'm not, you're saying try as much as possible. At whose expense? And my con concern is that you're dealing with people who largely are ignorant of a lot of these things, as well as ignorant of their rights. So if you're going to try, make sure these people are well aware of their rights so that if things go all right, course, you're ready to fit the bill. I, I don't really want to hear down the line. All right, let's suffering. move on. There are so Side many um, issues this morning. I'd like you to keep your responses as brief as possible so we can cover all of them. The NDDC accusing lawmakers of seeking 6.4 billion naira um, and fake payment. Uh, Najib, what's your quick take on that? Uh, it's this, this has been a trend in, in Nigeria since the Obasanjo era. Something wants to happen, you have to settle someone. I, we don't, let, let them bring out more facts. Let them say who did what exactly when and things that the EFCC or other bodies can act on. Knowing how our lawmakers are, I, can't, I cannot vouch for them that they didn't do such a thing at this very critical time. But then, let the facts be presented to the EFCC or ICPC or probably the police and let them take action. It's, it's, it's very wicked and dangerous for anybody. And you see the NCDC um, DG, I've seen him, his action and everything. I've seen him as someone who is not willing to play the usual ball that most government officials, most public servants are willing to play. So the thing is, let him present, let him, let him present what really happened, the, the facts of it. Let him submit names, let him submit times and other things to the EFCC. Let them investigate and fish out those who are responsible directly. All right, Najib, um, I'll just highlight some other headlines on The Nation and then we'll flip to the punch to see what we can cover. Um, you might need to read those ones up if they interest you. Uh, we have the one on governors to take position on financial autonomy. We know that Buhari signed the uh, financial autonomy for the judiciary and legislature across the 36 states, so that's uh, a reaction to that. Lagos grants tax payment payers more time to file returns. And then something for sports lovers on Igalo on the front page as well. To the Punch newspaper now, we have NSCIA raises panel 
can MITS on worship centers reopening? That's it on your screen with uh, the three riders. Can proposed guidelines target social distancing at church services? Uh, NAPDAG disagrees with WHO continue hydroxychloroquine uh, uh, trials. Um, Ikene, mm. how do you think the social distancing will work for the churches reopening? What's your take on all of it? And government seeming to, you know, slow dance towards um, a full commitment to reopening. Yes, I mean, it's clear that governments, no one envies government at the moment because they're having to negotiate a lot of things. We know that even the easing of the lockdown in general was not one that was necessarily reflective of the figures we're seeing. We're seeing a rise in figures, and yet we're easing lockdown. So there was a pressure, most people would, would admit, even government, to get the economy back on its feet because people were hungry or starving. So when you look at the church, I feel it's a similar kind of thing playing out. It's going to be difficult to control people in that kind of an environment where your natural instinct is to express brotherly love. You know, so how are you really going to do that? You're not going to shake anyone. You're going to stand apart. It's possible, but it's, it's likely that you're going to see more and more of exposure going on. So my own take tends to be, even the way we are living at the moment, there's hardly evidence that we are abiding by, even if you just go out on the street, there's evidence that everyone is pretty much going about their daily lives, and the risk factor is pretty high. So my optimism is really in the fact that I just sense that we have been caught some slack here in Africa because if you go by the way we're living, we should be seeing more deaths. I know we're not testing as much, but we should be seeing more deaths. So somehow we've been given an escape clause. I don't know how to put it. Maybe we're going to see herd mentality manifest in Africa and primarily in Lagos. That's my, that's well, we, my hope. We, we seem to be living on hope a lot. I was Honestly. just about to say, I hope not. And then I said, we live on hope that, that's really when all we're we not have. working, yeah. really. Yeah. Okay, uh, Najib, there are other headlines here on the Punch newspaper. No, I, I, I would like to talk on this. The issue of this church allowing people hold um, hold service. Right. You know, just exactly. before just before coronavirus came to Nigeria, we had um, Lassa fever already, and I was at the church one Sunday where I saw people they were dipping their hand into a little bit of maybe holy water or something, well, no, yeah. and maybe do that. on their head before they go in. You know. And already, I was thinking, if coronavirus or even if this Lassa fever is in Lagos, do you know the dangers? Luckily, the next Sunday I went to the same church, they had stopped that. They had stopped the dipping of hand into water to, you know, they had the stopped uh, shaking your neighbors. So those things might help. But eventually, uh, ultimately, sorry, we have to suspend those things. Let's look at the nations who brought this religion to us. Look at the Catholic Church. Are they holding services? But the Muslims, look at Saudi Arabia, look at Mecca. Are they having their, their, their salat or something? So we have to look at them. If you look at what they are doing, we can determine and say, oh, we should suspend this thing. And my, my best advice to Nigerians is, for now, you can worship anywhere. Read your Bible, read your Quran. It's there. You can worship anywhere. It's when you are permitted, when everything is in order for you to congregate. That's let, when you let, congregate. Let me sing a little yeah. and say you're not looking at the business angle of this. You remember <laughs> that <laughs> as much as it's a religious uh, place, I mean, we go there to yes. seek the face of God. It's also businesses that needs to be run. And the more they are shut down, the more their revenues dwindle. See, I'm not sure some churches already had started making offerings and tithes via mobile and digital payments. You go to the church, you are listening to your service, and next thing, something scrolls on the screen to tell you, type star so and so, star this. I, I, I do that in churches when I go. You know, so this, this, this is an opportunity. See, no matter how bad this COVID-19 is, we are, we are doing... Previously, I must come to your studio before we would have these uh, news reviews. Now we are, we are doing news reviews online. Mm -hmm. We need to think of things that even when COVID-19 goes, we have to continue some of these things mm -hmm. because they are just simpler, better, easier, and cheaper. So they should imbibe those those digital payments. Okay, Najib, I'm going to interject, or else we won't get to other issues at all this morning. Yes. Um, a little look at the Punch newspaper will show Nigerian children deserve all care, attention. Uh, that's Gbajabiamila uh, speaking. IMF advises banks to suspend dividend payment. 
foreign direct investment dropped to $214.25 million in the first quarter that uh, MBS are uh, talking to us this morning. At the bottom of the paper, you will see a man rejected by Lagos Hospital over COVID-19 fear dies. Lecturer uh -oh. tackles Oshun uh, Rector for suspension over alleged plagiarism. FCT arrests 29 Lagos-bound commercial motorcycles, Caesars trucks. Um, Ikene, is that one from that that you want to speak yeah, on? I'll just go quickly. Yeah, yeah, to quickly. The next I mean, because Najib said, oh, oh, at the guy who died. It's, it's unfortunate, you know, that these kind of mm. things happen. The only thing you can hope for is that if we really care about human life, that someone traces back to who was responsible for not flagging up this man's condition, because he may have lived if he had only gotten the attention. He may have. We yeah, I was know. actually listening to a radio um, program yesterday, and somebody called in to say there is a case somewhere on the mainland, um, but he didn't have credits to call and the... And credit runner. Uh, yeah, and then the presenters, I, I didn't follow through. I think maybe there are cases that might not be reported as should, because the people that are contacting this um, a virus may not have the means to communicate. As, yes. as so well. I, don't know, I don't know how we're going to do Maybe toll-free number, something, because we need to show at this point that we value human life. There, there has to be a way we can reach out to the man in the streets mm -hmm. and say we value your life. And this man is an example of, un unfortunately, a loss that we needn't, possibly needn't have suffered. Okay, let's yes. see what's... What, um, what, no, what I would say about this um, issue, the, 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 the loss of life here, is that a lot of hospitals don't have PPEs. And right now, when you are dealing with a health situation, a patient that has symptoms which may resemble COVID-19, medical staff that don't have PPEs and are not ready to handle, are not prepared to handle um, coronavirus, they don't want to go near those patients. So if we, allow, if we tell all hospitals, for now, you should have a small room that anybody that says they have malaria or typhoid, and they are coughing or they say they are, be prepared. Let have at least one person with equipment that they can put on. Because in my area, someone was ill some nights ago and nobody wanted to go help the person. Oh, wow. But I had some, and it, it wasn't even related to anything. She was just ill mm -hmm. and nobody wanted, but I had like a rain jacket full, this thing. I had my mask, I had um, goggles. I, I, you know, I put everything on and I went with another person and, we saw the, she had just ulcer. Yeah. We called the health center and they came. They, the guy, the other guy that came with me, he didn't want her to get into his car. Yeah. Oh, so wow. we called That's an ambulance. Wow. Yeah, we called an there ambulance. There is a for growing the, stigma the, with this thing that yeah. needs to be addressed, yeah. honestly. Yeah, so yeah. every hospital, every hospital for now should have someone mm. with, with that equipment so that whenever you see them. a patient, whatever it is, you see a patient that may, you suspect may have. COVID-19, someone should be able to wear those things, get the person into a room and start, you know, treating or getting information from the person. Where have you been? So it should not be an issue of you go to a hospital and people say, ah, don't come near us. Or No, 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 it shouldn't be that. All we right, let's look at uh, Nigerian <laughs> Tribune now. Uh, the NDDC uh, situation, forensic audit is captured there as well. We have um, other um, stories. Um, uh, there is one that caught my um, eye there. Uh, okay, it's not on your screen, but I'll just read. Oh, yes. Uh, PDP on Ondo Guba. PDP aspirants reject Deputy Gov's offer to step down. Anybody free to join our party? That's PDP. I have no plan to step down for Akere Dolu. That's uh, Keke Meke. Uh, we also have another one. Uh, calls for PDP calls for disbandment of FEC. That's the uh, uh, Federal Executive Council, um, I'm suspecting. And details of that is on page 27. Uh, we have um, not East to lose a generation to Boko Haram military actions. That's Amnesty International. Um, that is worrying. A generation. Mm. Um, uh, I, I, I mm. want to get your thought on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite striking. On. Again, one thing that stands out to me is that we're relying on Amnesty International for our data, unfortunately. And one thing that COVID-19 has taught us that we need to generate our own data. And that, that um, process of generating data is, again, it shows that you care. You care enough to put figures to you know, issues that arise that concern the everyday man. And until we care enough to demonstrate it in that way, we're not going to intervene the way we ought to. We're doing a blunderbuss approach right now. And so I don't trust a lot of our interventions because they're not data driven. If Amnesty is driving it, it because they've done the groundwork. But um, yes, it is, when you look at it in that light, 
it tells you a lot. It tells you that all these deaths you're seeing on a daily basis, they amount to a whole generation being wiped out, which will have repercussions. There's no doubt. If you lose a whole generation, you're going to see all kinds of things falling, in, falling out of, of sync. You know, you can imagine what that means. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we need to pay more attention to that and we need to drive our own data. Again, thank you very much for coming on the program. Your thank time you. is appreciated. Oh, okay. May I say um, happy Children's Day to my children? Yes, indeed. I know they're watching. Happy <laughs> Children's Day. <laughs> and of course, Najib Bello, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the you. program. Thank you. All right, that's how we wrap things up this morning on Off the Press. Again, I say happy Children's Day. You're special. We love you and we pray for you. Do take care and I will see you soon.